Landscape of Paul, I'm a machine learning engineer. Um, so um, for the next maybe 20 to 30 minutes, I'll be mostly talking about one of my uh, past projects. It's named Aurea Cathy, uh, an artist in the clouds. Uh, so before starting the session, um, I would like to just acknowledge the challenging times we are having. Uh, the pandemic, uh, it's been unfortunate uh, for uh, many of us, um, like 2020 was not uh, not at all planned as the way we wanted it. But anyway, in the challenging times, I feel that some of the, the uh, behaviors we have picked up, uh, like say spending more time with the family or uh, maybe you know personal hygiene, uh, everything, uh, all of those positive things, maybe we can imbibe uh, to our rest of our lives. And um, on that positive note, uh, you know, uh, in the adversity, in the verge of adversity, also if we can, if we can find something positive, uh, that would be great. And that's a great attitude. And on that positive note, I want to start my presentation. Um, so, uh, uh, Oria Cathy, it's a, it's a side project, as uh, mentioned before. It's a side project. Uh, I have worked uh, you know, a couple of years back and let's uh, begin with the idea, how the idea was formed. Okay, uh, so uh, yeah, so um, okay, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm, okay, got it. Okay, so uh, that's uh, on the left side that see, you're seeing is Fabian Rashid and on the right side it's me, it's Liverpool. So uh, one thing I want to uh, make sure that, okay, so I don't really have, as you see it right now, I don't have the long thick hair I, I, have, I had when I was doing it like, um, so I want to tell you something like a uh, hair fall is real and <laughs> it's actually going to get all of you guys <laughs> sooner or later. <laughs> okay, anyway, so uh, Fabian and I are, um, uh, from the same college, but we didn't interact much uh, when, we, uh, when we were at the college because he was my super senior. Then after that, he uh, joined Adobe. He was working as a chief, you know, a kind of innovator at, the, at their innovation labs. And it was uh, really amazing. He actually had around uh, seven to eight patents to his, uh, himself. And uh, he's uh, doing tremendous things in, um, you know, um, in the field of art and uh, design. I was also doing, after my master's, I was doing many things related to artificial intelligence and I've been doing projects. And uh, we um, we started talking after he noticed one of my projects and we immediately connect each other because we both wanted to create things. Uh, he also uh, was working with art and design. He was also creating a lot of things. Same thing with me also. I was also trying to understand um, how I can um, apply machine learning techniques on different problems and like that. So immediately connected on that note and we started jamming. It's a, it's a you know, the time frame was all, um, I think 2018, um, September, October. Uh, that's when it was happening. And we started jamming ideas. Okay, build, okay, do, let's do something like, okay, art and design is there, that regime is there. And then uh, we have the uh, AI regime. Let's, let's mix it up and let's understand what's going to happen. Let's build something related to that. And finally, after a lot of, uh, you know, brainstorming sessions and ideas, um, idea jamming sessions, we finally landed uh, to an idea called artificial poet artist. Uh, so it's very abstract, uh, right? It's a very abstract uh, thing. So what is artificial poet artist? That means uh, it writes a poem and then based on that poem, it creates an image, an artwork. And finally, based on the mood, uh, that image is colored. So artificial poet artist does all these three things, but it is artificial. It's not, it's not a real person who is doing it. So that's a, uh, <laughs> that means uh, it's a very abstract idea and um, the obvious question is uh, how to do it because um, I'm not sure how many of you guys are working on AI but um, this kind of an application this kind of a complex sophisticated abstract application cannot be you know done with a single algorithm that's the point here so how to do it it's, it was a question uh, I faced uh, during the after the idea creation so um, 
the next question was how how to do that okay so the approach i have taken was okay say this is a complex problem and we don't have a single answer but we can actually break this problem down to multiple components and then uh, address each of them like uh, divide and rule what colonials was doing to us so the divide and rule uh, it was it was uh, that idea uh, you know put things forward um, say like um, algorithms uh, say i can create a point with a language model language model is something related to natural language processing and that field. so um, i'm not sure if anyone of you are not familiar with it also it's you can actually uh, don't worry about it because it's not a technical uh, presentation so um, language model just think it as a black box and i am actually feeding a lot of uh, text to it and train it and once i train it i can actually generate the uh, generate similar context of uh, text so it means if I want to generate points, I can feed the algorithm the points, and then I can generate points. That's how it works. It's as simple as that. But it's not as simple as it is. But you know, on a uh, Falcon view, it's, it's it is what it is. So I used uh, GPT two by um, OpenAI. That's an algorithm by uh, from a research organization, OpenAI, and uh, the training data I used was three point five lakhs of uh, haikus haikus are short points japanese short points but we used uh, the english points in the same structure and um, it is coming from reddit and that's how we framed our language model so it, it solves one problem that is generating points the next one is how to um, generate an image from it, a text uh, from the text so that is Again, done by another algorithm, algorithm called attention GAN. GAN means uh, generate to adversarial networks. It's an advanced topic in uh, machine learning, but uh, uh, that's uh, that's coming from again uh, Microsoft uh, research, and um, that's how we transition. Uh, we do the transition of uh, you know uh, from the text to the to an image, and again uh, after the image, uh, we do the style transferring for coloring the image. So style transferring must be knowing to you many of you guys because there was an app called prisma okay prisma was there uh, it what it does is it actually uh, create your uh, you know create van gogh uh, art 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 uh, uh, from your selfies that's what uh, that kind of things where prisma was doing I, i'm not sure if that if that app is here right now but it's almost similar to um, uh, prisma style transfer and we have used a bit of advanced uh, algorithm for it uh, it's called fast photo style from uh, nvidia and uh, in that what uh, what is actually special about it is we have used style images as the wiki art data set the, the wiki art data set contains around 4000 um, artworks which are classified or aggregated on the base of human emotions. That means there is a happy picture. There is a, it's, I'm, I'm actually talking about in a, in a layman terms, actually. So it has a happy picture, maybe, maybe an angry picture, maybe a, everything related to emotions. So once we transfer the style and the color from this uh, artwork to the generated image, which means that essentially we are actually channelizing the idea of uh, transferring the emotions. That's, that's not the perfect way to do it. Oh, of course, we can argue on that, but uh, that's what we did actually for the project. So this is the engineering framework, uh, uh, but maybe maybe something much simpler can be shown visually is how the data flows through the, the pipeline. So the first one is we generate a haiku from the language model. It is haiku line means I didn't say I was a huge fan of that method. That's something generated. Um, that's a generated point. And then the next one is an image generated or uh, from the text. So as you see, it's a very abstract image. And uh, some maybe you can argue that doesn't make uh, you know um, much. Uh, it's not much correlated to the the text we are having. But that's true. That's true. But in at 2018, the best we had was attention GAN. But when, when two years after in 2021, OpenAI coming from coming with uh, something called Clips, and it's a it's an amazing uh, text to image net, uh, network, and it is doing amazing work on the same uh, uh, context. But at that time, we had uh, limitations from the technology and the algorithms. Limitations were there in the literature, so we used the best we can. 
and once we have the image we can color it so completely became something else okay so after styling what we get the image that's the final image we that's what we you know try to present somewhere with the point that's the idea so you understand what the idea is and how it was evolved in um, using you know the different algorithms the engineering infrastructure i hope you got it now it goes to the persona of oria so what kind of an artist oria is okay that's the next thing and regarding that um, oria is actually oria cat is an anagram you must be know about what an anagram is so ai haiku art the same spelling different words that's what it is uh, so um, ai haiku art is uh, transformed to oria cat and it gives a persona of a woman Uh, a female artist, and we conceived her as a um, social media artist actually, who posts the artwork to the social media through Instagram and Twitter. And uh, it was planned as a one-year project, so there will be for every single day there will be a posting, okay, in Instagram and Twitter, and there will be three sixty-five artworks once the year ends. So the year was two thousand nineteen, okay. and everything about oria is artificial so as we see it the poems generated by the oria is coming from an algorithm the image is coming from an algorithm the styling is coming from an algorithm and the best part is on the right side what you see is the face of oria and uh, let me tell you um, that's also artificial that person does not exist so it's uh, it's looking very really, uh, uh, authentic when it comes to a face of a human being but it's actually an artificial person it's it doesn't exist that way that person doesn't exist but uh, it is also you know coming from an algorithm called progressive ads by nvidia so this this is actually the the i the, the prime idea we are trying to pitch in like the, the artist is not like the artist we see or we have seen it's completely artificial face is artificial art is artificial the poems are generated are artificial so that's the idea we are trying to you know uh, the concrete idea we are trying to imply here and uh, but look at her she is she's beautiful right she's really beautiful and then goes the content so uh, okay i have talked a lot about um, the 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 generation the idea the everything but at the end of the day what we trying to understand is how good it is how good the content created by oria that's that's, that's a question okay uh, she is an artificial artist we understand it, but how good it is then we can go to the the poem generated by one of one of the poems generated by oria think about the the left top one i knew they don't want to be the problem they just want to be the best yeah so that's uh, that's something that's something very deep because think about uh, now we have a lot of co- uh, co- you know confrontation going on uh, between the government and the the farmers at delhi delhi then it is actually uh, when we when we are actually reading this, this these words with the context of that kind of a revolution they don't really want a problem they don't really want to be the problem makers they just want to be the best for themselves you know that's that's a uh, very deep i'm not saying that uh, an artificial algorithm or the mathematical model can actually be philosophical no the meaning is actually made by us human beings not algorithm so when some uh, ore is making a uh, a uh, poem like that it is actually seeing ones and zeros but when we see it we actually you know read it with a context like a you know a farmer protest that is going on in the capital we can understand that okay this makes so much sense and the other one is like uh, you really believe the government is controlling the person in washington so the borders has changed recently and <laughs> that's also you know when we mix up the context with the the artificial content generated by the artist that's uh, going to the completely new level okay then it's about the points but then the next slide is kind of the one of the insanely beautiful slide i'm going to show you this is coming from oria's work think about it see see this is this is amazing because in the each frame we have an artificial artist 
okay generating some kind of a picture and it is going to a frame and think about it how beautiful each frame is a kind of a masterpiece and think about it in the near future uh, someone is coming to a living room and you, there's actually a wall painting there and someone is asking okay nice work uh, who did that and you say uh, that's not done that's not done by a human artist but uh, uh, but software and, and, and think about it it's it, it's not um, a far future it's, it's a near, very near future we, we even have we even had the plans to do it but anyway it didn't happen but that's what it is each one is insanely beautiful and then comes the perfect collaboration so we have talked a lot about uh, uh, the engineering architecture of Aurea, but uh, I said it in a very you know, peripheral view, but it is not what it is. It is actually a bit complex to maintain this pipeline, you know, uh, bringing in multiple algorithms. It, it is tough, uh, trust me on that. So then comes the perfect collaboration with the, one of the greatest companies ever found in this planet, Microsoft. Microsoft uh, came uh, through uh, 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 someone who, is, who should be you know, mentioned here. His name is Santosh Pirlai. He's the principal program manager of Microsoft Redmond Office. He actually came in and he was very much interested in this idea. And he said, OK, we have this platform. Uh, would, would you mind uh, you know, trying this platform and understand how we can use it for Aurea. So then, then we had a, you know, it was kind of an epiphany, you know, like uh, our vision about, you know, uh, our vision about building something so abstract, but through, you know, divide and rule uh, uh, fashion. And for each algorithm, there is a compartmentalization and it is, it is actually matched with an industry giant's uh, product. And that was so much validating and that's so much reassuring that the way we see things is the same way the industry giants are also seeing things. And that was amazing. And uh, not only that, we, we were able to use their platform uh, and they actually helped us, you know, building the tech stack. Also, they have uh, financially supported the project. And uh, this is actually the technical stuff. I don't really want to discuss it, but uh, it is as easy as you know doing this entire project on a single Jupyter notebook. It is as simple as that. Um, and the next one, the stage. Uh, the stage is really important for an artist. Uh, in our country right now, we are seeing a lot of oppression for the artist because they are talking against you know which is not right, and they are being you know putting into the jail and everything. So for an artist, if there is no stage, then then there doesn't mean anything to them or to the art. So we also wanted great stages for Aurea. Okay, Aurea's uh, art should be heard and seen and experienced by the human beings on a large level. We wanted that. Okay, we are posting it to the uh, Instagram and we are getting good response from there. That, that's not enough. That was simply not enough for us. So then we explored the ideas where we can portray or we, where we can showcase our work. And we found the perfect stage for that. And that's uh, Florence Pinale. Florence Pinale uh, that happened in 2019. Aurea's work was selected under the contemporary art. And uh, that's us, uh, Fabian and me, uh, representing Aurea and her work uh, at Florence Pinale. And on the right side, what you see is uh, the Colosseum, and we were taking a duck face selfie over there. <laughs> yes. So, uh, uh, so let me tell you about Rome. Uh, it is one of the greatest places I have ever been to. Great, great city, great food, great people. Uh, when I was, you know, um, studying B Tech, I think, I think that at that time, I think I'm seeing the film Angels and Demons. Okay. So Tom Hanks star, star film. Yes. So. Um, since then, I really had this, you know, uh, this, I don't know how to put it. I really want to visit the place. Uh, and with Aurea, that, that was kind of a bucket list that happened. And there is a lot of bucket things happen because of Aurea in the, that is in the rest of the slides. 
Okay, so that's what it is. It is a great experience. Everyone loved uh, the work of Boya and the novelty of the idea of a virtual artist, you know, on an international platform. Great. And the next one is uh, someone, uh, if you're working in the regime of machine learning, you will be knowing about your ideas. It's a, you know, the, the greatest um, technical conference that happens every single year on machine learning and uh, artificial intelligence. And uh, Oria's work was selected to the online gallery of new ideas as well. And uh, that's about the stage. And about the media coverage, um, you know, Aurea was loved by the media, you know, the idea, the, there was a lot of featuring uh, in you know, radio, in online platforms, in newspapers, it, it, was, it was an amazing thing, you know, yes. Um, so, and then comes the most important part. Whenever we talk about uh, artificial intelligence or machine learning, you know, a lot of times we get this backlash that, okay, Am I going to get, uh, you know, replaced by a robot? You're going to kill my uh, job. That's what I say. That's what it says. But that's that's entirely a different topic. When it comes to create human creativity or art, we don't really want to replace anybody. We want to collaborate. We want the artificial agents to be collaborated or inspire human beings, human artists, and ins, you know, instigate their creativity to try something new. So inspiring human creativity is the idea we are trying to put it, put it here. Uh, it's not about replacing people, or, no, it's not that. So on that direction, the things happen. That's uh, first one is, uh, this is actually work from Aurea. Okay, this is a generated image. What Fabian did was he actually painted a, a painting, a canvas painting, with the inspiration from this current uh, jet, uh, image generated by Aurea. And that's amazing. He called it the augmented artist. That is, a human artist is actually getting inspiration from the uh, virtual artist, and he's creating something new with it. That's amazing. And then again, the other one is coming from the trolls, actually. It's actually Malayalam. I'm not sure how many of you guys will be able to read it, but it's very funny. You know, I, I personally believe that I also make trolls sometimes. So um, I feel that uh, trolls are actually a great way for self-expression. And uh, it, it requires a lot of, uh, you know, skills from, from relating, relating, you know, relating things together or, you know, it's a lot of, you know, creative work involves with making trolls. So I take it very seriously. So even trolls were made. And the other one is really, really on a diff very different level. Okay, it was right, it was written by uh, someone called Jayashree. She is, uh, you know, uh, she's not uh, coming from an age group who is so much interested in artificial intelligence or something like that. She's a housemaker in Kerala. She actually heard about this uh, this idea of building a virtual, uh, virtual artist. She was she read it through the newspaper, and then she wrote a poem about Aurea, about that idea. You know, the very idea of a virtual artist. She was inspired by it, and she wrote a poem with it. These kind of things we want it to be happen when AI is coming to the art or design or whatever. It is inspiring humans to do the next next thing, the, the big next thing, big next step. Great. And uh, the next one is the talks uh, I I did uh, with uh, the related to this uh, project. And the first one is a, a, a TEDx talk uh, from I, I think 2019. And it was not entirely about Aurea, but it was a part of the, the, uh, the Aurea was part of the talk. And it was about the projects that I, I've done in the past, which actually based on the idea of building new perspectives with artificial intelligence. Think about it. You know about the usual artist, a human form of it. When we replace, or, or when we, not replacing in that sense, when we replacing that idea with a virtuality, virtual uh, artist, uh, there will be a lot of perspective building, okay? There will be a lot of perspective building. And when we see the world through that new pair of uh, eyes, 
uh, that will make very little difference. And so uh, the main idea, uh, main project that goes into that talk is about building, uh, you know, uh, a new gospel <laughs> with algorithms. You can check out uh, that project, uh, Gospel of LSTMs. That's a project I have done in 2018 or something. You can read about it online, but I don't want to be you know, um, elaborated here. But it was about generating a new gospel by training the algorithm on all gospels. So it's a kind of a very new way to see things, see religion, see you know society, uh, everything. And the other one is other talk is about pi data, and it was pi data Delhi. I, I delivered a talk there. It was about the engineering aspects of Orion. That's the two talks. And then. Um, Anybody who would like to dig more deeply, it was actually, you know, it, I was just scratching the surface, but there is a lot of course with Aurea. If you really want to know, understand the complete full picture, full scope, uh, you can actually log, log on to uh, aureacathy.com and you can understand what all things were happening around Aurea during all these years. Okay. And um, at last, uh, I always, I'm so much inspired by the, the, uh, the persona of uh, Steve Jobs, so always try to include something from him in every every presentation I, I deliver. In that, uh, it's one of my favorite. Something like creativity is just connecting things. It's uh, it is what it is. You know, whenever people say, whenever people talk about innovations, they get this mistaken idea that okay, we have to build something from the vacuum. That's not true. Nobody, nobody done that. Okay, everybody actually were inspired by the the, the older self and learned things from there, and they connected it and they built something new. So this is what innovation is about. Whenever someone is saying like, "Okay, I'm going to build something new," it doesn't mean that it's entirely new. It existed in some other form. These people just understood it, or they connected to different ideas through a single, through a unique channel, and that's how it worked. Anybody is, uh, you know, stopping you from innovation, uh, saying that you have to build something new, entirely new from it. That that's not true. That's the that's the uh, idea I want to put forward through Aurea and through the court of Steve Jobs. Okay, uh, so that's the last slide. Um, anybody has questions? Uh, Mr. Paul, that was such an interesting talk. Thank you so much for uh, talking about the entire journey of uh, creating this artist on cloud. I think the best takeaway from for me uh, through the course of your session was how um, absolutely passionate you sounded about the entire project. I think that speaks volumes about how much you feel about this project that you invested in. And I think um, passion goes a long way. Uh, always, but, always my baby, you know. I'm so passionate. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So uh, we have a couple of interesting questions. I'm going to start shooting them one by one. The first yes. question that we have here is, what are the limitations associated with this project? So what sort of uh, limitations did you face while building this? And how? where does it stand right now? Great. So uh, the, the first thing uh, I've already mentioned the talk is about algorithm limitations. You can't just come up with a single network, neural network, or any kind of an algorithm to build something like a very abstract idea of a point artist. You can't do that. But there are actually the, the research is going really well. And in just a matter of two years, the entire state of the art has changed completely. So now we have very able algorithms to, uh, to do it, but still we really don't have a single algorithm to do it, but we have algorithms which can actually do much better than two years. Okay, so that's one thing limitation is there. And then we, when we want to do something like, a, you know, going into the production with this kind of a, an idea, it's very expensive. So you know, that's, a, that's another limitation when it comes to, you know, finance and everything. But luckily we had uh, Microsoft, and they liked us, they actually funded the project because we lucked out. But then something else is happening. What I'm trying to tell when it comes to finance or something, believe in your idea, do it. Someone will be interested and help will come. You know, help will come. Don't, don't just get, uh, uh, you know. And other one is coming from the, the mentality of people. So we actually try to um, present this, showcase this idea uh, to a bunch of people. And it was 
they were like, okay, you guys are actually getting into the, the capitalism is getting into the art regime and it is it is not at all cool, just like that. So I was kind of, uh, I was telling something, okay, this is not about replacing anybody. This is about, you know, inspiring uh, human uh, creativity. But uh, that that idea was not really got, you know, instilled on that. So that that's that's not a limitation. I'm not sure if it is a limitation, but I think people should have more, uh, have to be more open about technology. Of course, there should be regulations. I'm not talking about an uh, utopia. I'm talking about regulation. There should be regulations, privacy concerns. We really not recently we all know about the privacy concerns from WhatsApp, but people should generally have a you know, uh, wider perspective about how uh, technology is getting used. They should be aware of it. They, they should not be something like a vehement no. Uh, that that's uh, that's not cool. No, that definitely makes sense you know the broader your horizons are the more you will be able to assimilate and then you can eventually make informed decisions as to uh, what you like what you don't but if you are closed from the very beginning then doesn't leave much scope for uh, uh, creativity ahead anyway so with that we come to the next question uh, so one of our attendees has asked uh, is it possible for fusing emotion AI technologies to create AI generated music. Yeah. So uh, if, regarding the emotion, so that's uh, that's uh, for me at least what I know about it is um, emotions are tough to simulate on a mathematical level. That's what I understood. That okay, I'm I'm actually following. I also have an idea of you know. Uh, <clears throat> writing a book about layers of emotions. Okay, I have never talked about this on public, but some of my you know, very uh, close, close people, they know about it. So this is the idea, think about it. Imagine someone is going through a trauma, okay? And you want to be empathetic with them, okay? But you are coming from a very different background, right? Very different background. You don't really um, have, know how she or he must have gone through that process. And you want to emotionally connect with them. How are you going to do that? Or say something like, there's a system, okay? There's a system is actually helping you and telling you that, okay, on the mark, on the on on 10, on 10, you're actually connecting, emotionally connecting with them only by six. You need to increase your empathy. Some meter is there and you can, can empathize more, okay? So this is actually some kind of a, longer dream I that it can be more start I have for my you know, uh, future pursuits but it is actually going to be really cool if we, if we can actually mathematically model emotions but it is really hard so emotional layer what we are talking about we are actually having a very good sentiment analysis uh, classifiers and identifiers are there right now yes it's there are state of the art things are there still but we some, sometimes struggle with the sarcasm like that it is there there are limitations but still we have gone a uh, long far uh, long, we have uh, taken that leap in that in that uh, sentiment analysis thing but uh, i'm not sure on a general perspective or in a general form human emotions are well mapped so um uh, that's an open question that means anybody can attack it so anyone who asked that question please start doing it i i, I would love to see your uh, results on that Thank you. Well, definitely lots to think about in this field. I mean, it's just opening up. So, you know, there's so much more to do, um, which brings me to my next question. Uh, how much time does it take for Aurea to generate a poem accompanied by artwork? Does she to rely on creative spaces like humans for expanding her style of art? Okay, so uh, this, is, uh, this is something, uh, so uh, something very interesting because see, um, Humans are evolving continuously, okay? But Aurea knows only about the data she was shown, okay? So her learning is limited. If I want to uh, update her, I have to show her more data, okay? That's, a, that's one thing. So to evolve, uh, so once we have that limitation about learning, there will be definite time to generate an art. Maybe she can generate uh, if it is a uh, if it is an acute system with a lot of GPUs and everything. Uh, she will be able to you know generate come up with maybe a thousand or ten thousand points in a in a second. Okay, so it is not as painful as a human being 
to come up with an idea. So that's where the the pitching of the idea, inspiring human people, human inspiring humans coming from. Oh, okay. So this is how it is like. Like say, imagine Air Rahman. We know all about Air Rahman. Air Rahman was told, say something like, uh, say I want uh, five songs, and one of the songs very really romantic. I want that. Directly say something like that. And rather than starting from scratch. Air Rahman is actually starting from. I'm not saying that he should do it. No, I'm not. I'm not saying that. But he's actually starting from a five generated samples. Okay, yeah. which is which takes very little time for an artificial agent to uh, you know generate. Yeah. If he can do that, then his creative process is actually getting a bit you know less hectic. I'm I'm, I'm sure. Okay, he don't want to do that. Anybody don't want to do that. If they, if they call it dilution or whatever. I don't I don't know. But this is this is something we want it to be. You know, uh, so. That's uh, that's a question. Comparing to a human artist, it's very very quick for a virtual artist to generate ideas. That's the truth. Yes. So uh, the next question that we have here is: Is Aurea? Uh, yeah. Aurea... Yes, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, so uh, is Aurea available for the public to transform poems to images? Is it an open source platform? Can we access it? Yeah. So uh, we uh, have, we are uh, you know. Uh, very strong advocates of open source code. So everything, whatever I have done with my with my project, it's actually in my GitHub account. Okay, uh, me and Fabian, both of us are strong advocates of open source code. So it is actually available for you guys to experiment with. Okay, do whatever you want to do with it. Okay, nothing malicious, but it will be constructive in that sense. Okay, so you can do that. Also, the underlying algorithms that is attention GAN, we have used for this text to image. It is actually again, it is open source it's coming from Microsoft Research. You can go to the repository, or maybe you can go to uh, you know my uh, GitHub handle, and you can understand. You, you will get almost every technical aspect of it from that single repo. Okay, that's uh, that's how I have written that documentation. Okay. That's yeah, that's wonderful. Um, we've linked your uh, social media handles, your website, as well as uh, the Aurea uh, website in our chat. So I would request all our attendees to look at the chat and access whatever link uh, seems most um, perfect to your requirements. Um, and with that, I'd like to ask you another question. Uh, so according to you, uh, when you came up with this project, what was the main purpose that you had in mind? Uh, actually, uh, that's, that, that, that's also I mentioned here. Uh, Fabian and I, we wanted to create something. We, you know, that's the, that was the only thing. There was, we had no idea that this is going to be, this is going to get, get the, so much attention and media coverage, or we will go to Italy and you know, present it there. Or, no, we will get the collaboration from it. No, we just wanted to, you know, do something, uh, create something. That's what we wanted. Just that's what we wanted. And everything else is, you know, came along the way. There was no such purpose of, you know, building this. No, there's nothing was there. We just wanted to get that joy from creating. That's it. That's a sincere answer. Yeah. Very, uh, very truthful and uh, from the heart, <laughs> I would say <laughs> that answer was. Um, okay, so Mr. Paul, the next question that we have here is, um, do you as a machine learning engineer have concerns about how AI will take over humans or the ethical implications of AI in our day-to-day -day lives? What is your personal take on this? Okay, okay, let me tell you something about, okay, uh, see, um, when electricity came, a lot of people had the same issue. When photography was found, a lot of people had a lot of issues like, okay, it's going to be, you know, what happened before photography? A lot of artists used to draw your portraits. That's what happened. So all of them thought that, okay, once photography is found, these people will be jobless. But what really happened? What really happened was surrealism was formed. Okay, a lot of new art, uh, uh, you know, art regimes was found just because photography took into the portrait place. So that's what I'm saying. See, these. AI or whatever the technology is, you have to evolve. That's what it should be. You can't be stuck. Uh, we are actually above all, we are actually the human beings who are, who are actually coming from the, 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 the way of the fetus is coming in there. 
I'm not saying that okay, you have to evolve, you know, completely, you know, black to white. No, I'm not saying that. But there should be periodic evolving should be there, and that's how we can actually catch up with you know you 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 can't miss the boat. That that's how we can actually do that. And about the jobs, I'm telling you, okay, there will be some jobs will be replaced by AI, yeah. but that will create new jobs. And something like a Terminator thing, that's never gonna happen. And at least in, you know, uh, in at least in our lifetimes, that's what I believe. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. The, the Terminator is out of this. Well, that's that's very wonderful. Um, okay, so. The next question that we have here is probably going to be the last one. Uh, and after that, we'll take your uh, last words. OK, so this question says, how promising is the use of AI in composing lyrical pieces in addition to poems and uh, how, how, uh, how promising is how, how, uh, the use of AI in composing lyrical pieces? Mm -hmm. So it is almost the same as uh, the, the same process we have done for the poem generation. It is you feed the lyrics and you get the lyrics. That's how it works. It's the, again, language modeling. But the thing I want to tell you uh, is maybe I really, I personally don't want it to be used in a, hello. Yeah, yeah, I'm here. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so I really don't want it to be used in, you know, in a role level. I want uh, someone to start from that idea and start, uh, you know, uh, by building new perspective to it, the human perspective, because whatever it be, AI models, they're software models, they're, they're mathematical models, they're actually seeing this as one and zeros. They might not be able to interpret it philosophically or otherwise. So they're just doing what they're, you know, what they're uh, directed to do. That's what is happening. Maybe it will change, maybe it will change, and maybe in coming years they, they could change, but Currently, it is what it is. So I really want, uh, if someone is actually doing something like that, a creative pursuit like that, okay, generating artificial lyrics for uh, their upcoming movie, I would say, okay, uh, if you want to do it as a cool stuff, like a cool stuff, uh, do it, it's fine. But I always feel that uh, a human in interpretation and intervention should be there, and human artists should, should take it up from there. It should not be presented in the wrong all form, it should be presented with, you know, adding human value to it, and that's all. Because art is something uh, we we are actually making a uh, meaning for the art. Art at its raw form, it doesn't have a meaning. It normally is enjoyment. So that's that's what I feel about it. There should be some human interpretation. Wonderful. Thank you so much for answering all of those questions so patiently, Mr. Paul. It was an absolute uh, honor to have you at India Science Festival. If I could just take your last words um, uh, on a very inspirational note, what would you say to all our young listeners who are interested in this field and want to do something good in AI and art? Um, so um, it was actually a great platform. I, I, I understood that Indian Science Festival is actually using, uh, as we, it's a big thing among the students, and it's actually inspiring a lot of people. And I'm so humbled that you have given me a chance to present this idea. When uh, Shruti approached me for, for the first time, I was not at all, you know, my response was a bit cold because I, I understood that I, I, I won't be able to do a live demo with you guys because everything is actually almost archived. So, um, but uh, the platform, the response I've got, all these questions I've got, I understood that all of these people are actually, uh, you know, trying to make sense of this project and maybe some of uh, them are inspired to do things. So I'm so humbled, I'm so humbled to be here, to, you know, to be uh, a speaker here. Thank you very much, Indian Science Fest. And Sruti, thank you very much for your uh, patience and persistence to get me here. Thank you. And everyone who asked questions, who, who listened to this, uh, 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 this talk, thank you very much. Thank you for you know understanding uh, the project and asking these questions. And 